Hey everyone, all right, welcome back to Righteously Redeemed. So we just had our conference last weekend. This week flew by for me and um, it was just so wonderful. So if you got to attend, thank you. I hope and pray that your time spent was just filled up and you were able to acknowledge some of those lies that you've been telling yourself and um, you're walking in truth because that was exactly what the Believe Conference was about, being able to identify those lies that we tell ourselves that the enemy tries to place on us that do not line up with scripture, what God says about you. So um, it was a wonderful, wonderful conference and it was just so great to see so many of you guys and our vendors did an amazing job worship was wonderful food was yummy of course we had a great barista and um it was just exactly what the lord had given me as the vision so um i'm just so happy that y'all got to just experience and um, just join in on the blessing that the lord has given the redeem team and if you weren't there, just to let you know for next year, we did announce the next year's conference and it's all over grace. So grace is to give and receive grace, giving and receiving grace, which is something I think we don't give ourselves enough grace to then be able to extend it to other people. Um, and super exciting, it's going to be co-ed, which means it's going to be men and women will be attending this conference next year. I really do believe that the Lord has some amazing, amazing, um, things to share through people, especially over the next year on just how to extend grace. And I just think we're going to be loving because that was the first conference, walking in God's love in every single season of our life. We're gonna be breaking the lies, the lies that we tell ourselves every day. We're gonna be able to give and, ex give and receive grace. So it's gonna be wonderful. Just know it's all the details will come as the Lord reveals them to me. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right in with the message that I have for you guys. Um, tomorrow is August 1st. And um, something that I've kind of challenged myself with the word discipline, if you didn't watch the very first video um, for this year, that's just a word that I've been focusing on a lot, just discipline and building my disciplined routines. And uh, something too, to be able to come to you guys and share more videos. So many of you subscribed, that's amazing. You've even shared them with some friends. Wow. Um, I think that the Lord wouldn't call me to do this if I didn't feel like he asked me to because I just spent a little bit of time getting all of this ready and I'm like, Lord, what are you doing this for? And he's like, it's for me. So just be obedient. So I'm so happy you're joining in. And if the Lord has told you to do something, I highly encourage you, get started. Get started and do it. So August 1st is tomorrow and it's a Monday. How amazing is that? Don't we love when a new month starts on a Monday? I mean, it just sets you up for success. So you're getting this video tonight in hopes that you watch it so that you can sit down and just make some goals for the month of August. And a challenge that I wanna give you guys. I was just blessed to get to go to um, a Mary Kay seminar right here in Dallas. And it was wonderful, it was so powerful. And every single um, speaker that I heard, just winner in their um, business basically, was able to give glory to the Lord. I know, it was such a shocker to me to think I'm at a Mary Kay seminar and so many, so many women were giving praises to their Heavenly Father. And not just like, oh, praise God, it was like scripture that was helping them, that was getting them through this whole last year of their business, what was encouraging them. And I think it was so timely that I was able to join in to Mary Kay at this particular time because this next year, the entire um, theme for the year is the golden rule. And it's very scripture based. Uh, Mary Kay's values based off of God first, family second, career third. So I think of it as like faith, family, finances. 
which obviously faith goes into all of those, but I like all the Fs that kind of go with it. So in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, I just want to give you a basic principle. You've heard it. We all know it. But I'm going to challenge you. And this challenge is not just for you. It's for me too. So Matthew 7, verse 12, and I'm going to actually read Passion Translation. It says, in everything you do, be careful to treat others in the same way you'd want them to treat you. For that is the essence of all the teachings of the law of the prophets. And I teach first grade. We're about to start school very soon, and we'll be going over our classroom expectations and just to treat our classmates with respect, how to be kind, how to be considerate. And I know I'm not the only adult who struggles with this, but the idea of treating others how you would want them to treat you, being able to stop, catch what you're going to say before you speak it. And we know that everything from the heart will flow, right? So if you're already thinking it and it's in your heart, it will come out. It will come out. And if you're saying something negative or hurtful about somebody, it's going to get back to them. It will. And how hurtful will that be for that person? Where you think you're doing it in a silent whisper, but everything in the dark will come to the light. So that just gives me my own conviction to make sure that I'm very conscientious of my words. I'm very aware of the things that I'm saying and how I'm using my words to then also, if there is any bitterness or anger or resentment in my heart that's built up, that I can surrender and release it to the Lord and ask him, Father God, remove this feeling that I have towards this particular situation or this friend or this colleague, whatever it may be. Because when we have bitterness like that, it truly rot, it rots us. It makes us just, it has physical effects on our body, believe it or not. And um, I just encourage and challenge you that this whole next month of August, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And some of you may think, well, I wouldn't care if somebody did this to me. Who cares? Yes and no. I think we all know the level of what people would appreciate, especially if you know that person or if you work closely with them or if you're around them. Would you want someone to slander your name? Would you want someone to be negative about you or talk behind your back? It doesn't feel good. And some people might say, who cares? I don't care what they say. Let them talk, which I get. All right, I totally understand, but that doesn't give you the right to do it to other people. So I just want to make that clear difference that even if other people are talking about you behind your back, doesn't give you the right to start doing it about them. And that goes with family, that goes with uh, spouses, siblings. I mean, I'm a teacher, even in the school environment, like pretend that everything you say is on a microphone and it's being broadcasted for everybody to hear. Would you want your words to be heard? So at the conference, I didn't get to really share a lot about this, but if you're watching this video, you're obviously um, in, so I wanna show you. So we have some shirts. And I didn't get to share these, but one came to me. It's called Spill Your Testimony, Not the Tea. And we know that like spilling the tea is basically spilling, you know, the what's in, the what's hot. And I was reading scripture and this came to me. And I had my own conviction. I was like, ooh, I like to know the tea. I like to know what's going on. I mean, I can be transparent and honest. But to be able to say, no, one of my really good friends, she challenges me. She's like, no, how are you doing? What's going on with you? I'm like, well, work, blah, blah, blah. She's like, no, how are you doing? I was like, well, in my house, you know, no, like, how are you? I don't want to know about your HOA or your job or your family, like you and all of this. And it was just like, oh, I have to talk about me. Like my testimony, what has God been doing in my life? And then the other one I have is spread the gospel, not the gossip. And I think this is so powerful because there's so many stories. There's so many stories in the Bible. I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can read any of these stories and start talking 
about what these people have done and how they overcame it or the consequences that they fell into for their disobedience. And I think that's why the Lord gave us the Bible, to be able to learn and read about other people because it is part of the gospel. It's the good news, and we can find Jesus all over it. We can see how his hand works and heals and provides and redeems people. So even that person that you're about sick and tired of, right, think about them as if they were in the, in the Bible, right, and how is God redeeming them? How is God restoring them? And instead of going and talking all about them, talk to the Lord about them. Journal, pray, release, ask God to do a transformation in their heart because he's the only one who can do it. We can't change people. We can pray for them, but as we pray for them, our hearts are gonna start to change. We're gonna start to have the heart posture. We're gonna start to have the character of Jesus Christ. So when people do start to be hurtful and ugly and mean, you don't want to lash back out. You don't want to give them what they deserve, right? Like, give me a, give you a dose of your own medicine, right? Oh my gosh. And that's hard. That's so hard because we want to pop off. We want to say things. We always have a comeback, right? But hold that comeback. Resist. Resist being ugly and mean. Resist not being, you know, who God created you to be. That's my challenge. So even going back to work, even the things that I don't want to hear or the ideas or the thoughts that I might have, take them to the Lord and just silence. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Don't say anything at all. Give it a silent prayer and just trust that God can do more with how you're feeling and what you're thinking than you going and saying more. You know, our words literally have the power of life and death. So if the words that you're saying are not uplifting and encouraging, zip it, zip it up, zip it up. And it's hard, but you can do it. And I just give you a month, a challenge of August. And then we'll touch back definitely by the end of the month. But before then, I'll be recording other videos. So if you haven't subscribed, be sure you subscribe. And um, if you're going to be in on this challenge, I would love for you to add in the comments, I'm in. Challenge accepted. Um, are you going to live out that golden rule for this month? Anytime you think about doing something or saying something that you wouldn't want done for you, don't do it. So before I go... Um, I have something really, really cool and exciting to share. I was at this seminar this last week. It was so fun. And I actually ended up finding a ring. And I think it's cool because it's gold. It's a golden ring. And it, let me see if I can show you where it says this. It actually is a Cartier ring, if you can kind of see. I thought it was like a washer. I literally thought it was a um, like a like a screw because it's kind of interesting shaped so I thought oh my gosh this is a Cartier ring I need to take it back because obviously if it's somebody's ring they want it back like I would want my ring back so I went to the store once I like got back home and settled and everything and from the week I was gone and this weekend it was such a fun week and weekend oh, the Lord is so good but anyways I ended up going to the Cartier store and I showed them the ring and I was like, hey, like I found this. I want to make sure it gets back to its rightful owner. They're like, oh my gosh. Like they were looking at it. They're like, thank you so much. You know, they put it down and they took it to the back. Cause I was like, surely there's a serial number. They're like, yeah, we're, we're going to inspect it and, and figure that out. And I mean, they were gone for a few minutes and the guy was like, you were so thoughtful to bring that back in for somebody. And I was like, well, of course, like if it was mine, I would want somebody to bring me my ring back. So they take it to the back, they find out it's actually not a Cartier ring, it's a knockoff, but, so they were like, you can keep it. So I was like, okay, well, I don't know who it belongs to. But the man was so sweet and thoughtful. He was like, I'm gonna get you a little red bag. I was like, oh, okay. So he gave me all these little chocolates, like all these sweet, yummy chocolates. And he was like, have you been to the exhibit yet in Dallas? And we're having an exhibit. And I was like, no, I haven't. So he literally gifts me four tickets to the museum 
And this like giant, I think it's in my living room, this giant um, coffee table book. I mean, giant. And he was like, you can just have all of this. He's like, good people deserve good things. And I was like, well, definitely not scripture based, but I was like, thank you. <laughs> I was like, thank you, thank you. That was so kind. And I just thought, man, like I wasn't expecting any of that. I was just trying to return this ring and just do the right thing. Say the right words. You might not always say them correctly. That's okay. I'm the queen of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, but I'm getting better and I'm acknowledging it. And when you mess up, you apologize and the person can forgive you and they can move forward or they can hold their own grudge against you. But forgive yourself for your mess ups. Forgive yourself of the hurtful words that you've said and know that you can always start over. You can always start over because that's what grace is. Grace is given to us freely. So don't stay in condemnation. Don't stay in guilt. If you've said some evil, mean things about people or done some bad things or stolen something, which I didn't steal it because I tried to give it back. But you know what I'm saying. Just give yourself grace. Apologize. Move forward. And just do better. That's all we can do. It's progression, not perfection. I'm sure you've heard that one before. All right, guys. Y'all take care. Bye.